It is, it is my pleasure to be with you in this evening. Once again, the medium has asked you to imagine the beginning of the universe. But she took it a bit further, emphasizing how much you are one with God, emphasizing that you have all the qualities, you have all the abilities, all the power of God. You have that within you. And that you are the one who creates the world in which you live. It is something that she says, and I hope you have listened and thought about that statement, that you are the creator of the world, that you live, and the life that you live, that you do this, simply by living your life. You make decisions. You have thoughts. You weigh things, meaning you think about them and you choose that which you want to do and what that you choose, that which you think is the best for yourself. And in doing so, making these decisions, you truly create the world that you experience so that if you do not like the world that you have created for yourself, it would be wise to think about what you are thinking about, to see whether it is the world that you want. Because what you think about is what you attract to yourself. If you think that you might be ill, you soon will feel ill. If you think that thought frequently enough, that something is wrong with me, I am sick. Something is wrong with me. I might have cancer. Something is wrong with me. These kind of statements create that which you experience. You see the universe, the God within you, is, I am going to call it impartial. The God within you hears what you think. Here's what you say. It does not judge. It simply listens. And if you choose to think about and to speak about illness, failure, various situations in your life that are not good, then that part of yourself, the universal God that is within you, assumes that it is what you want. You want to experience these things. You say it constantly. So therefore, this must be what you want above all things. And so it works to create these things for you. That is the universal world, the universal intelligence, that part of you which is God. And we do not always understand the ways in which God works. And surprising things will show up in your life. And so if you have been thinking of things you don't want, you can be surprised by obtaining exactly what you don't want. Because you have spent so much time thinking about it, 
that God knows it's important to you to get it. It is what you want most in the world. So therefore, God manifests it for you. Now you could be thinking about things that you really want to do. Things that make you happy. Things that make you rich. Things that keep you healthy. And God also hears those things. If they are predominant within your life and your thinking, that is what he helps to manifest for you. And so, you would be very happy to get those things. They must be what you truly want because you spent a lot of time thinking about them. And so God knows they need to be manifested in your life. And the God part of you helps you to manifest them and bring them into existence in your life. And then it is an important thing for you to understand. You see, there is a law, a law of the universe, which says that everything is mental. That nothing is real. It is just an illusion that you yourself create and that you bring into manifestation. It appears solid to you. It appears real. And so whatever you think about can be manifested because everything is mental. So watch your thoughts. Try to keep them focused on things that make you happy. Think that you are competent, that you are confident, that you are healthy, that you are rich, that your life is perfect the way you created. And you will find that your life becomes more perfect, more enjoyable, more happy. And so you are blessed by your own thought and what you manifest in this way. So I wish you to remember these things and we will talk about more about these things on another day. And so, do you have any questions you would like to ask or have me answer? Now, I am sure most of you came with a question that you would like answered. So please speak up. Okay. Thank you. A um, couple of things, if I may, just as, as a little background. Um, I mean, I, my, I'm going to leave my questions till second. And the first part is sort of comment question. But um, so, I, what you were saying just now about manifestation and mental and the mental, um, just for, you know, and for a, a fair bit of time, I've had sort of anxiety and depression and a lot of brain fog that may be related to some physiological things. So I'm not functioning the way I have before. And it can be very disheartening, um, very, you know, like, oh, please, God, help. And I do say that. Um, I do say that. Um, but I, I can just run out of focus and steam to do what you're saying. And, and the best I can interpret from what, from what you said that I can do is when these 
you know, unhappy thoughts or, or distress are coming over me, I can, I can do another thing I've been taught to thank God ahead of time. Like if I'm very upset about something, um, thank you, God, for making the way clear. Thank you that, that this is resolved. You know, I can do the thank God ahead of time thing. So it's, it's hard to make it just an affirm, affirmative I am statement. I am the opposite of what I'm feeling, but I can thank God for, for taking me there. So that, that's the way I think I can work with what you were saying um, at this present state. And I do have a question apart from that, but that's sort of a comment question. And I understand that. And I would have a suggestion for you since it is difficult for you to think of those I am things that you would like to be. Take a moment, uh, perhaps tomorrow morning, while well, your coffee or whatever it is you do for breakfast, and you make a list of those statements that you want to feel, that you are happy, that you are healthy, that you have an abundance of energy, that you can solve all your problems that you are capable of solving all your problems, that solutions come to you quickly and easily. You all, I always know what to do. So make those statements, write them on a paper. So when you need to make those statements and your mind is depressed, and nowhere near these statements that you can pick up your piece of paper and read these statements and read it again and again. Write as many things as you think you would like to be and say, I am, I am this, I am that. I am capable, I am confident. I am competent. I always do what's right. So when you are in a happy mood, take that moment to write your statements. And whenever you think of something new, write it down. So your list gets longer and longer. And see if that is a pill. So what is your question now? Okay, thank you. Um, my question, uh, my question is, and you've taught me, talk, talked to me before about doing one thing at a time in order to complete it, um, instead of being so pulled apart and distracted by multiple things. Uh, yes, I remember our conversation. So I, I'd like to layer on to that, that one of the things that bothers me in my environment is, is too many, too many papers and books and even pretty things. It's, it's like, it's not simple and clean enough. So energetically, even though everything may be have its own value, energetically, I feel like I'm being squished by too many ideas, too many things, however nice they may be. Um, and, and I'm longing for less because in the past, having less felt more spacious and, and, and it didn't contribute to this sort of state of overwhelming confusion. So I'd like to keep letting go of things no matter how nice they might be with that wish of, of just feeling more expansive and less oppressed. And I wondered if you felt my feel my notions that that would help me are, are. Absolutely. Absolutely. It is very important for you to reduce the clutter in your environment because that does make it difficult for you. And in order to do that, of course, you must steal yourself to throw away those pretty things. Begin to make a habit to address your mail every day and throw it away. Unless it is a bill or something you must take care of, throw those 
advertisements away. I'm pretty good at that. that stuff. I'm pretty good at, and I'm very good at getting, very good at that. I'm very good at keeping my wardrobe pared down. But books, ideas, projects, mementos, um, those things I'm not so good at, and they all have an emotional entanglement, and they probably have value, but. It's making me feel like I've got people pulling me in a thousand directions and emails. Yes, well, unless the um, unless the ideas that you say, you know, unless the are pertinent to exactly how you wish to earn money and to make your business grow, throw them away because they're not helpful to you. You have a purpose that you want, which has to do, I believe, with some form of writing and helping um, corporations. And so unless this is an idea which will help you advance your business, it's just a distraction. If you want, you can start a file. Call it my distractions file and put those good ideas into it. Now, books are much more difficult because they cost money and you have paid to receive these books or uh, you have been gifted these books. So as you say, they have emotional attachments. But unless it is a favorite book, perhaps, you can find a special bookcase and put it in the closet or a room somewhere you never go and put the book. Put your books away in the bookcase. They are out of sight. They will soon be out of mind, but you will still have them if you want to research something or find something that you might have had within the book. Then, when you no longer remember what you have in your bookcase, or your bookcase is now full and overflowing, the rule must be that you only keep books which fit in the bookcase. So you only keep the most important, or the most favorite, or the most informative books that you wish to keep, and you will be able to slowly get rid of books that are, do not serve you, that are of no use to you, because the rule is it must fit in that bookcase. Honestly, they all fit in the bookcase already, and they still <laughs> oppress me. I'm very organized, but I'm oppressed by too many things, too many well, ideas. Then you know the answer. Throw them away, donate them to a charity, give them to someone else. It's a simple answer, and you knew the answer when you came. I, I guess I wanted to know if it would make... If, it does make a difference. That's what I meant, because I may have great natural health books or metaphysical books or money books, but but I'm not going to read them all. And they just sort of yell at me like, hey, you haven't read me. Or I, I, I just have this, it doesn't feel good. Yes. So you have to give them away. Or you can throw them away. Oh, um, give them away. Yeah, I give everything away. Give it away. Yeah. Uh, that is an idea. And it is good to, there are places which will take books. So... But do you think that'll matter, like whether it's books or or little heirlooms or pretty things? If Absolutely. I, if it's just my environment just feels more spare, will I feel better? Yes, absolutely. Your researchers have already shown that when people do not have clutter, do not have an overabundance of possessions in their home, they are often happy. Because, as you say, you are free. Possessions become a burden. 
you cannot use them all. You cannot read them all, the books. You cannot enjoy the mementos of past times because it becomes clutter. You have no space. You need to get rid of those things. You will feel much better. I know that to be true. Okay, so it is, even if it's challenging to, to let certain things go, the result will not just be like, oh my God, I let those things go. It'll be, oh my God, I feel better. <laughs> Yes, exactly. It is, oh my God, I feel better. Yeah. Yes, you will feel better. And then perhaps you will be able to focus and get on with your business the way and grow your business the way you really want it to. That's my hope. And I'm just, I guess I'm asking that releasing more clutter isn't just me distracting myself but actually me helping myself, you know, because we can all pick diversions. Yes, it is helpful to you. It will be you helping yourself by going through your books and getting rid of the ones that you probably, be honest, will you ever read it? And if the answer is no, out it goes. And sometimes they like, feel like, oh, I should read it. I don't know that stuff, but. That does not. You cannot ask whether the book is telling you to read it. There is a famous person um, who helps people declutter their homes. Her name is Marie Kondo. Oh, I have her books. <laughs> Natural. Well, then if you only read one sentence, her sentence is, does this make me happy? Right. Does this bring joy into my life? So you've read her books, you know what you're supposed to do. You look at her books, does this book bring joy into my life? No, I've already read it. I know what it says, put it away. Put it somewhere, gone, it is gone. So you do that with your clothes already. Yeah, yeah. So do your things bring joy into your life? No. It is, it is cluttering up your house. So let go of things. Okay. And put, and if there's something I really can't let go of, but I can just put it in a box because I don't know what else to do with it. If it's not a lot, but some stuff. Yes, you can. I will keep this and I will keep it put away. Because if it's not on the top and you don't see it, you will not feel its presence as much. Okay. So you knew the answer for what you needed to do. You just wanted confirmation that it would work. Well, I, I did. And I wanted confirmation that it wasn't just me finding another way to uh, and, uh, use, it, use it as an avoidance tactic rather than as a, a progress tactic. That's all. Well, you reach a point where there's nothing else you can get rid of and you should be happy then. You should have the space and then you must discipline yourself to use your time wisely. Yes. To work on your business. Okay. And think of that as bringing you happiness. To succeed in your business, to make your business grow is your source of happiness. Yes. And then you can, you will be able to apply yourself because you will want to feel happy. Yes. I'm going to, since I'm going to ask one more little bitty question, the same topic though. Um, some of the stuff I keep are, are files from my career in the past because they sort of remind me that, wait, I have been successful. I did do these things. Um, and some of them are special and others of them aren't. But is that, holding, is, is that holding me in the past that I keep old files because they help me remember myself? Or is that okay? That is an interesting question. I must contemplate it a moment. So I must ask you a question. 
do these piles comfort you? Do they make you happy to remember the past? Do they give you confidence? I think I keep them. They don't all comfort me, but I think I keep them with the idea of giving me confidence. Some of them do. Some of them spark joy. Others just help me remember I've done things. Yes. Well, get rid of the ones that only help you to remember you've done things. They don't give you joy. They don't inspire you. If you have some that inspire you, well, of course you can keep them and say, this is a good idea. Look what I did. This is good. So I will keep it because I can use this. But um, if it does not inspire you, you might as well throw it away. Okay. It's just more paper cluttering up in your house. As I said, get a box and put all those good ideas that you may do some way in a box and put them out of the way somewhere. You don't want them on top of your desk. You don't want them showing up first. They're not things you need to do or you want to do. They are things that you thought was a good idea. And might be in the future, but not right now. Might be in the future, but not right now. So I'm saying you don't have to get rid of them. But if you don't start looking through that box again for ideas or things to do, well, maybe you should get rid of them. Okay. You see, sometimes putting something aside is helpful. And if you don't look at it in a certain amount of time, it is time to throw it away. I have confidence have that confidence. you will give yourself the space that you need to stop being distracted. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you very much for coming and asking a question. Who else has a question? I have a question, um, but you might have already uh, answered it uh i was going to ask uh if i have all these negative thoughts and i'm trying to change them into positive thoughts um i like your idea of writing everything down and then reading it when i need a reminder um is there anything else i can do um to get rid of those negative thoughts One way of getting rid of negative thoughts is if you realize what you have said or thought is a negative thought, you can say, cancel that thought mm -hmm. and then make an affirmation directly opposite so that if you had a negative thought about, I'll just say cleaning your house, and you say, I'll never get my house clean. You say, cancel that thought. I will succeed in getting my house clean today or within the week. Great you, answer. Yes, you immediately cancel the thought. Mm -hmm. And then you um, say something opposite to affirm thought, which is what you really want, not the negative thought. Yes, that sounds great. And I have one other, oh, thank you. I have one other question. Um, can we use the same process or is there a process to um, ask other people, uh, I mean, ask for things for other people? Um, like I just had, um, my daughter just had our first grandson and, you know, naturally I want to, I'm always um, wishing uh, for God to keep him healthy and happy and, and all that. Um, is there a, is there a way to, um, 
to do things for other people? Yes, especially when you are talking about oh, such okay. little ones. Yes. <laughs> but basically, it is the same technique that we suggest you use for yourself. Your grandson's name, I'll assume it is James. And you say, I thank God for James in my life. James is a happy baby. Okay. He smiles a lot. James is very intelligent. Yes, James is happy. James right is now, well. You can say, watching, um, she's yeah. kind of like a psychic on Zoom. And she's answering some of these questions. But can I call you back when it's over? To say hi? Did you get back? That's that sounds great. Did you get I, back I, to Joyce? Just wait a moment. She's will be done with her phone call in a minute. She does not realize she is not muted. Oh. Charlotte, mute yourself. Good. She's muted. Now, um, yes, you can proclaim that it's hard with a baby because there are not demands you can put on them. Yeah. For you wish your significant other to be well and you want them to be happy. And so you prepare again in the beginning. It's hard to come up with statements. So if you write them down, you can form them into a narrative which you will read. And mm -hmm. You will be able over time to remember your narrative and you will repeat it. Yes. And you will bring uh, good health, success in business, that someone is always successful. There is one cardinal rule, however. Everything must be put in the positive sense. You mm -hmm. cannot say that his immune system keeps him healthy and free from disease. You must simply say that his immune system keeps him healthy. Mm -hmm. You cannot use what you don't want. You cannot say that at all. You must say only those things that are positive and correct. Yes. You understand? Yes, I understand. And when I say statements from myself, I say I am. If I'm saying something about or, you know, praying for somebody else, um, would I say he is like the name is? Is there, you know, I yes, know. You could, yes, you can say James is or okay. Michael is or Sarah is, whatever you like, okay. uh, whatever the name happens to be for the person you wish to pray for. And um, it is good for you to say a statement such as, I know okay. that James is happy. I know that James is healthy. I know that he is perfectly. You know, his immune system keeps him well and healthy in all ways. I know that because it's important if you can, Take a moment to put yourself in the position of being one with God. Mm -hmm. We started, I do not know if you were on at the beginning when we started the meditation, when the meditation was started. But many of the statements that are, are said that God and I are one. I am one with God in all ways. Mm -hmm. That kind of thing. My words are God's words. My word carries the full power of my God presence and must manifest. Okay. And then when you speak, when you say, I know, you are, since you and God are now one, and you put yourself in that one state with God, now you are speaking as God. Yes. So I know becomes the way that you affirm that someone is or has whatever it is that you want them to have. Yes, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. You're most welcome.
Are there other questions? <clears throat> yes, hi, let's see, let me get here. Okay, I, I apologize. I didn't realize that I was not muted uh, when Berta was speaking. Hi, Berta. I know Berta from many years, right? If she's listening. Anyway. Yes, hi, Charlotte. I had to yeah. unmute myself. Okay. Yeah, okay. So a few days ago, I woke up with a terrible knee. My knee just kind of collapsed. It's very painful and I can hardly walk. And it's so scary because I'm thinking ahead of all the things I have to do in that trip to Paris. And, all. and I don't know how, what am I gonna do? I I pray every time that I'm, um, thank you, dear God, for strengthening my immune system and keeping me healthy, happy, safe, and strong. But it's not working, and I don't know what to do, you know. And Charlotte, I have you this need terrible to go see the doctor. I don't know. Hmm. You I must know. go it's... see the doctor so that you can have it x-rayed, or uh, perhaps they can move it, or an MRI, or a test. There is something why they can tell you why your leg, your knee is bothering yeah, you. just out of the blue, it just started this terrible pain. And I thought it would go away after a day or two because, you know, I'm reasonably healthy and I exercise and I walk and it is so, I, oh my gosh. It's painful, I, I understand. Uh, but you now need to go, it did not go away in a no. couple of days. And so now it is your time to I go. I can't will it away, up. I can't, like I was, saying what you said, you know, to say, thank you for healing me and that I'm going to, you know, yes, get up that, and that my knee is perfectly healthy and well. Yes, you can probably get, uh, have that work, but why don't you use the services of a doctor? It's almost like I'm telling you, I don't have time for that. I don't have time. <laughs> I'm too busy with other things. I don't want to go to waste time at a doctor's and x-rays and stuff. I just want it to go away by itself. Well, that is wishful thinking, and it may work because you make the affirmations, but then you I, I may to... have to. All right, I'll wait another day or so, and then I guess I'll have to do that. And oh, I hope it's nothing serious. I, I mean, well, um, you you have taken um, the medications that are sold over the counter for these type of things to relieve pain. See that I never take medication and I forget, but I do have, yeah, I guess, I don't know. I just hoped it would go away on its own, but I should take, I, my daughter sent me some, um, like, um, medication of like Advil and, yes. Excedrin and stuff like that. That, that will right. help to alleviate your pain and you may find that with, it will heal. Judicious, yes, it, uh, those type of medications can also heal your knee. Okay, but is there anything I could do like powerful prayer uh, or maybe I, I guess I, I should join the healing uh, group on Wednesday and do some extra praying about it? Yes, you can do that. And mm -hmm. You can make the statements as you said that, or as I get, uh, spoke to Berta, there and by affirming that you are one with God and God works through you yeah. and you speak for God, so to speak, you can say, you know, my words are God's words, my actions are God's actions, I heal my knee mm -hmm. because I am one with God in all ways and I have the power to heal. So therefore I will add put my hands over my knee and it will be healed. Oh, okay. But you also know that it may take more than one healing mm -hmm. and take the medications from your daughter. Okay. Because right. they also will help to heal right. your body. Yeah. It's just, yeah, I'm... I've been so lucky and I feel so grateful that I haven't had anything like this in many years. 
But as you know, I think I shared in the past that I have had two hip replacements. And I just don't want to think that it, I need any more replacements. I don't want to have to think that it would be that serious. You know, I don't have time for this pain. It's like that song, remember Carly Simon? I don't have, haven't got time for the pain. That I'm too busy with other things and I, I just don't want to deal with it. So I'm hoping that maybe take what you suggested I will do. Take what your daughter sent you also, because mm -hmm. that is a healing thing to do, as well as make those statements that you are one with God, you have the power to heal yourself and others. Mm -hmm. And so I heal my knee. Put your hands around your knee and think of your knee mm -hmm. as being healed. Okay. And Thank you. if it doesn't work, you have to go. <laughs> I know I have to I take don't like to, I don't like to cast that doubt. If it is simply a case of you while you were sleeping, you twisted your knee a little bit. I think that's what happened. I think that's your... exactly what happened because it happened when I got out of bed a few days ago. I got out of bed and all of a sudden this terrible pain. My knee and I had trouble walking. And so you must rest it. So that does not you say, I am too busy, but then you will say that I am too busy to rest my knee. Mm -hmm. And so you must take the time to take the medication that your daughter sent to you. Try not to require yourself to do too much walking mm -hmm. so that your knee can rest and heal itself and as well as give your knee healing. Thank you, because that's, you, you know, I'm so looking forward to that trip with my granddaughter. And, yes. uh, I want and of course, you want to be able to walk and do whatever you wish. Right. So rest it now and heal it. And of course, if you were to take some time and on Wednesdays to join in with other people yes. in healing, you can do that too. Thank you so much. Love you all. Are there other questions? I have a question. Yes. Um, also, um, I wanted to show this to Charlotte. This is what I use for pain for my neck. It's a roll-on. Oh, yes. I, a friend of mine today gave me some something like that. This is amazing. It's a roll -on. It's, she said it's a roll-on, yeah. Yes, it's a roll. So I have nerve damage in my neck and I get constant migraines. So I'm constantly like putting this is a miracle. Like Oh, okay. I'm gonna do that more. Yeah, I, I have a roll that she gave me. Yes. Today, in fact. Yeah. It's amazing. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. I'm gonna get it. In fact. Is it lidocaine? This I'm one sure. is some um, I'm gonna get it. Oh, if I can get downstairs. It's camphor and menthol. So camphor and menthol. Yeah. Charlotte has left. Okay, so she my question can remind her at the end. Yes. Um, so my question is um, you know selenite. Selenite is a protective stone that it's supposed to it's like one of the strongest stones out there for protection. Do you know which one I'm talking about? The white one? Yes. Yeah, so I had the sword one. It was a selenite sword, and I keep that here. And um, it absorbs, like, the negative energy and stuff. And when um, the, the one guy from the church came here to remove, he removed an ancestry curse that I was born with. And I used the, the um, selenite. Uh, it was like a, it's like a, like a little sword to um, cut the cord of the curse, to remove the curse. And then I had it, I kept it here. And then two nights ago, somebody from my past contacted me and on Instagram and was really, really mean to me, like really, really, really mean. And I had like really bad anxiety. And this took place in my room that I was arguing back and forth on the messenger with this guy and I 
yesterday, my room felt very heavy. Like I felt the energy from that negative um, conversation and I couldn't breathe because it was that negative energy. So I came out here today and I had a photo shoot in my living room and they told me we're going to do a pose holding that, um, that sword. And I picked it up and the whole thing kind of just like melted. I guess because it filled up with everything. Um, We did um, salt it and throw it out because I'm nervous. Like my question about it is because it was used to take out the curse, it's not going to reactivate, is it? You mean the curse will reactivate? That's what I'm afraid. No. Okay, good. Whew, I was so nervous because that happened today. And I'm like, oh, my God, what if that's, like, bad? I'm sure that it will not reactivate. My question to you, however, is why did you continue the conversation on Instagram with the person who was being mean? Why did you not cut it off and tell him I, that if there is some way not to allow him to speak to you again, that is all that you must do. I did blog him, and um, I think I continued because when somebody pushes my buttons, I kind of keep going and going and going to get my point across, even though I don't get it across, and I just get more aggravated. And that's something I have to teach myself to stop feeding into it and just, like, block it. But yeah. instead, I keep going and it's like, no, this is this way and this is this way. Don't tell me that. What's wrong with you? And then I just keep going on with it. I don't know why. But then I blocked him. But I felt because I I have like psychic abilities I was born with. And I feel all the energies. And I felt that heaviness. Just I couldn't even go in my room yesterday because of how bad it was. So I saged the house and stuff today because it was really like heavy but when that melted today it just like really scared me because it was something I've never seen before well let us just say it was full it had taken all that it possibly could and you can get yourself another one okay good so I don't have to worry about anything coming back yes just no just uh Dispose of whatever is left of your that one selenite sword and buyers purchase a new one. Okay. You don't awesome. try to reclaim. There are things you can do sometimes to cleanse things. Do not try any of those. Just go outside and bury it or put it in your garden or something. Yeah, that's what we did. Oh. Okay. You have I taken think- the action you needed to take. That was good. And now yeah. just find yourself a new one. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> By the way, is this what we're talking about, right? What, um, what um, you said. No. This, no, this one has a menthol and camphor. Oh, it's okay. a bio, it's bio says, leaf. Lidocaine. Lidocaine? Lidocaine yes. will also help your knee. Mm-hmm. Okay. But anyway, th- yeah, thank you. What, what was yours again? It's a leave. It's a leave pain relieving lotion and there's menthol plus camphor. Okay. I'll do anything I can to try to alleviate this without having to go to a doctor or, well, I'll have to, I guess, eventually. You sound like me. I don't like going to the doctors. <laughs> either. And uh, if, you know, if you take the leave, and I did. I just took- order sent you, which I think you said was a leave. Um, take that orally, and you use the lotion, and you rest your knee. You will find it healing. Mm, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Are there any other questions? Hi there. Yeah, I have a question. Well, a couple, real quick. Yes, Robert. Um, starting with Raymond, he. He got fired within a month after the training was done. Out of the eight people that were trained, two of them were let go. And uh, uh, unfortunately, one of them was my son. 
and I'm just reeling from it. Um, um, and I just want to know what, you know, so that he'll learn because he doesn't, he doesn't understand what potentially, if anything, he did wrong. I mean, he, he researched it and found out that the company, not just that company, I've heard of this also, they overhire according um, to, to Raymond's thinking, you know, what he discovered was that they overhire and then they liquidate. But I said, it doesn't make a difference. Out of eight people that were there, two of them are gone and you're one of the two, you know? So, um, and I, I went over things with him, but, you know, he doesn't know he's absorbed what I tell him. Um, and of course, with his special needs, he's not always going to. So I just wanted some insights as to what happened to him. And my husband had an interview as well. We haven't heard anything back. They asked what he wanted for compensation. And he got back with them to say, well, you know, what, what he wanted, um, you know, to be paid. And my brother-in-law, who's in finance, said, well, you, you know, you want to ask them first what the compensation package is, which they didn't get back with him. So, you know, just for a learning curve, what, what if anything, these two individuals were, you know, what went wrong? Thank you. When your husband returned with the question about the compensation package, their question to him was what he did he want to earn. And he did not answer that question, which left them, uh, the compensation package would have been, of course, a combination, a combination of what he would like to earn and the benefits that they give to their employees. So they needed how much he wanted to earn. And the compensation package is probably standard within the, uh, pretty much standard within the company. So, but your husband just did not get back and answer the question. So it left them in a bad position. As for your son, since they called, let us put it that way, eight people in for training, giving them the opportunity to see which ones, which candidates they thought absorbed the training better and um, would function well. It gave them a opportunity, an opportunity to observe their candidates more fully. Unfortunately, they did not find your son uh, compatible with exactly what they were looking for. He was not, apparently would not be working out as far as they thought. It may not have been so much something he did wrong. It just may have been they decided that they would have the training of these best candidates that they had, and then they would keep only the ones that they thought were best. And so he may not have done anything wrong. He just may not have been one of the best ones. Do you understand? Yeah, well, he asked a lot of questions and I said, Raymond, you, you can't do that. You can't, because it gives a perception that you're not grasping the material. I said, were other people asking questions? Well, that's the only way I can understand it. And really this was not so much a reach for him. It was really more uh, computer aided design, which is not his degree. He's an industrial engineer. He said that he was the only one that was the outsider. He didn't come from that state. And and a matter of fact, he made a comment about another gentleman in the class before he got terminated, quote, overtly autistic, and both of them were eliminated. So maybe they were concerned that if they have to uh, interact with clients and whatnot, that they might not have the, the social skill set, the developed social skill set needed. And on top of that, you know, Raymond had some 
bumps in the road like like that's what he creates he had to get a flat tire or actually he, he went in a pothole and he had a bulging tire so he had to waste time with that and miss some work for that and um because he was an outsider he didn't have any doctors or anything like that and um you know he asked the employer you know what they would be best so that he can go to a doctor and i'm like you can't tell him you're going to a doctor because then they have perception that you're sickly or something you know and it was just medication management for him but what was annoying i said next time you just call out sick you know people do get sick and whatnot so i think that was the issue as far as my husband's concerned with a compensation packet um it's not normal for an employer to, to ask you how much you want to be paid. Of course, everyone wants top dollar. They gave him a range and which was more than acceptable for him. Um, and the gentleman left in the interview and another gentleman, you know, conversed with him afterward as an informal interview, in my opinion, you know, showing him the operation and whatnot. And a compensation package can mean a lot of things. There's bonuses. There's all kinds of stuff that they may or may not do. Like, like Mark said, if um, I say this, if they don't have dental, for example, well, let's say vision. I know they, I don't think they have vision. They had dental, but not vision like that. That's something that you have to adjust for and whatnot. And really like I've taught him, the first person who talks loses when you negotiate money, you never give your hand. I, I'm, you know, I do this for a living every day, you know, and I'm very good at what I do. Um, you ask them, how much are you willing to pay for that? You know, you, you go back with, well, how much are you willing to pay me? Because he could have lowballed himself and then they're not going to have respect for him either. Oh, I, I, that guy doesn't think much of himself, you know, and, and whatnot. But I mean, um, it is as far as Mark's concerned, is does he not have the job at all? We haven't heard anything. You know, I didn't know if they were just tied up. He just had the interview. So did he get the job or not? <laughs> Thank you. I, I cannot answer whether he, he got the job or not. That question it is my. I just cannot answer that question. Um, but I understand about the compensation package and the way you are looking at it. But they asked him how much he wanted. He did not answer the question. He asked them another question. And that may have been the reason why he hasn't heard anything. So we do not know. I do not know. I cannot help you in this regard. Um, I cannot answer that question as to whether or not he has the job. What's your take on Raymond? I mean, he's locked into a year lease and they said, well, you have to pay at least two months. So he said, well, if if I'm stuck paying two months, which ends up really being the mother and father paying the two months, because he doesn't have, you know, any more income coming in, he needs that money for food and whatnot. He said, I might as well stay here and try to turn it around and try to get a job out here, which really frustrated me because he never really wanted to even go out there. They gave him a relocation package, which they ended up not paying him which now he's filing with the state that he lives in um, to, to, you know, go after that, which I couldn't believe they didn't give him. And it's clearly written in a contract. Um, I'm proud of him that he wants to try to tough it out and try to turn it around. But any thoughts regarding that? Thank you. He has the correct idea that he has to pay two months and he should, while he is there, make every possible um, possibility, investigate all possibilities to see whether he should apply, whether he can find another job that is suitable for him. 
and perhaps one that is more suitable for him. Since he is an industrial engineer, he is not a designer. Although he undoubtedly had some classes and would know what to do, that is not his main focus. So perhaps a, you know, he should continue to look for work while he has to be there. That is the right attitude. He did the right thing by saying that to you. You should not discourage him. Oh, I'm not. I don't want him running tail and heading home. My brother-in-law and his wife, they're like, oh, we can get all his furniture and pack up and, and um, you know, bring him home and whatnot. And, um, you know, Raymond's already had enough ups and downs in his life when he left his first college. That was eight years ago. And Ron and Mindy took him in and... Um, and I'm glad that they're there for him and I'm glad that they care about him. I'm hoping everything for him. It, it's just so aggravated. I was so aggravated that for the first time in my life, I actually got a therapist, you know, I, and I've never had a therapist before. Um, I had a session today, actually the first one, they have like 10 from, with my company. Um, and I mean, like I didn't have a total meltdown or anything like that. But I've waited, you know how long I've waited for him to graduate. And I was so excited for him to have a job, you know, a real job. You know, we're not talking, you know, amusement place, but a real job. And it, it wasn't even in his degree. Like, I didn't even think about that they could terminate him. That's how ignorant I was. I thought, well, they want him. They've already invested in him and they know what they're doing. And then it really wasn't a fit. And he even told them that this position was really not his main, like you said, his main uh, career. It it was something else. And I don't know why they even hired him. I mean, I do and I don't, but he had the programming down. But he asks questions. He always has, even since he was a little boy, when everyone was silent in the class. He never could understand it. And I'll be blunt. I never could understand. It. I've sat in classes. I have a college degree. And then I get out of class and they're like, well, I didn't understand anything. Well, why didn't you ask anything? Well, I don't want to look stupid. Well, you're going to be stupid if you don't know the material and you fail the class. You know, it's like a catch 22. But, you know, there it is. Well, we were not at the interview and you were not at the training. And so we do not know whether um, you cannot evaluate these things. It is simply that you cannot evaluate things. They hired or they hired eight people, and then they decided that they would only retain six. So they had um, they let him go. He was not as good as, in their opinion, other people. Perhaps the other people had um, a degree, or it, it's not so much degree, but a certification in exactly what they wanted. Yeah, they're mechanical know. engineers. Yeah, he was the only non-mechanical engineer. So <laughs> that didn't help him at all. But getting back to creating your reality, you know, your thoughts, your words, and your deeds, I just, I'm just floored every time. Like with Raymond, it's always an uphill battle. I wish that he could create a better reality for himself. I know it's going to be a struggle just to begin with because of who he is, but it's just so frustrating for me to watch it. You know, um, I had a, a friend. She was, you know, excited, and my sister, for that matter, as well, to be a grandparent. And I'm like, oh, gosh, I couldn't stomach being a grandparent. Because if I had to go through all this again, watching a grandkid with all the ups and downs and tribulations, um, I, it's just not something I, you know, I, no, not at all, you know, sadly, but true. You know? You're not ready to look at that. So that really doesn't play into consideration 
with these things. I understand that your son has been extremely difficult. And he, he is coming along. That is all I can say. And let him continue this struggle. And I know it may be difficult and heartbreaking for you to watch him struggle. But my suggestion is that you let go of trying to help him, that you continue to affirm that he will find a job and he will be successful and affirm that to him because he knows how to do things. What they were asking him to do was not within, well, it is a little bit within his field of study, but it is not that, as you said, a mechanical engineer. And it sounds to me like the position they were looking for was even less than what would be expected by a mechanical engineer. Mm -hmm. That a mechanical engineer would find this very easy for them. It is like a beginning subject. So they did not require answers to questions. They didn't require asking questions. And I know it is hard for you, but just keep affirming that he will be successful. He will find the job that is most suitable for himself. And perhaps it is in Indiana where he is now. Uh, maybe it will be somewhere else, but encourage, let him be, let him make his own decisions. Let him keep working at it. Try not to counsel him because he has to figure it out for himself because that is when it's in his head. That is why he asks questions. He has to understand. And he has to figure it out for himself. I know it is hard, but if you make the affirmation that he will succeed, he will find a job, that will calm you, which is what you need to do. And <laughs> you will also inspire him and give him the courage to keep trying and to keep working at it. Do not ask him what did he say what did he do do not be the grill master here it is not your place to do this any longer for him let him do the responsible thing for himself to figure it out for himself yeah. do you understand I, yeah i do no i agree I agree because I'm feeding into the negativity just because I'm so burned out. Like the therapist said, she said that I was too lenient and that, you know, we had to have clear boundaries. And, and, and you know, he's 26. He's not a spring chicken because um, she said, well, you got to tell him exactly how long you have to be there. And if you don't find a job and I'm like, well, I don't want to pull the hook right away or anything like that but we can't keep him there forever either and on our dime paying his rent we have another child as well who always suffers at the hand of him because it ends up that we have no money for her and um not that she demands things or anything because she's asking a lot from us psychologically <laughs> not monetarily uh, but psychologically and so um you know, and she's got other supports through her boyfriend and 
one night she's going to Costa Rica for spring break and we're not paying her, her, the boyfriend's father's paying um, and whatnot. So, but I, it just pains me, you know, cause I have two kids and it's always been Raymond, 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 you know, I'm just waiting for him to just take off, you know, and flourish. I understand. And using the affirmations that Raymond will flourish. Raymond is flourishing. Raymond has learned everything that he needs to learn to be successful. Make statements such as this. And it is good to put them in the now rather than in the futures. I made a mistake by saying Raymond is learning. Well, that is in the now. But he is successful, not he will be successful. He is successful. You just keep telling him that. I know you're successful. Go out there and be it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, it is time for us to end the evening. I hope everyone who had a question asked a question. And I hope you will all have a successful week. Um, I will not be able to be here as a channel or as a, with the medium. The medium um, is having guests. And so she will not be able to have this evening session. So I'm going to say good night to you now and I will see you in two weeks. So I give you all my blessings. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.